Pre-approved. The process of getting pre-approved, it's not very difficult, but it is also a little different than what the average consumer believes. When getting pre-approved for a mortgage, typically you have a conversation with the lender. The lender will then send you a link to their online application. For me, in the body of the email, I have a list of documents that I need for you to provide to me based off the conversation we had with what type of income, assets, and what your current situation is. I like to take tailor my emails to the person that is applying. I also like to have a conversation with the person who is applying prior to them doing the application or me even pulling credit or working it up so I have a good understanding of what you're looking for as a buyer or how I can help you or best help you, right? So with that being said, there's a few things that I'd like to dispel and I've ran into, it. I've talked to some other loan officers and we've all run into it. When we send you out the link to the application, Contrary to what people believe, it is not an instant approval. Yes, there are many things in technology that you can do to verify income, verify assets, verify work history and different things of such, right? I use those as last resort because people's situations are very complicated today. How they get paid, how they're compensated, whether they're full-time or they part-time, do we have to average their income? There's a lot of nuances that go along with it. And I want you to think of something, right? If I send you the link, to the application and it takes you four days a week in order to get the application complete because you have to gather the documents, you have to gather information to put into the application and it's your information. Us as the lenders, we have to do the same thing. So once you submit your application, that does not necessarily mean that in a few hours or even a day, your pre-approval is complete. The speed of getting it done or the speed of you getting approved kind of also depends on your situation. If you are a self-employed borrower, self-employed buyer, and you have Schedule C, if you have K-1s, or we need your business tax returns as well, we need to go through that to do a liquidity uh, analysis to see if you qualify because your business has to have money left over afterward. That takes time, right? Also, if you're a W-2 employee and you switch jobs multiple times within a year or two years, or if you even have multiple jobs and you work full-time on one and part-time on the other or per diem we, or seasonal, we need to average those incomes. Sometimes we have to reach out to your current employer to get that information because the pay stubs don't, do not necessarily give us a breakdown. And even if we use technology to go in something called work number, sometimes the breakdown is not in there either. So we need to reach out to the employer to get that information. We do that and I can say I do it so I can give you a more solid and better pre-approval based upon what we have as opposed to just guessing and not knowing the ins and outs of your finances, right? We can all make an assumption that based off the pay stubs that we receive that you work 32 hours a week but without having that conversation it could be possible that those weeks you had something to do maybe you had jury duty and those didn't count. So getting something called a verification of employment, even if it's pulled automatically through work number, I still like to verify and make sure that I have the most accurate income for borrowers because in this market, we need to get people qualified for as much as they can get because of incomes not increasing as fast as housing prices are growing and as well as the complicated situations that we've seen come back because income is not what it is expected to be. And nine times out out of 10, a person doesn't really know how much they make. So when we pre-approve you, we pre-approve you off of gross and not net. And when we ask for documents for the pre-approval process, we're asking for them, not because we're doing an interrogation, but because we want to make sure we have your loan approvable. So when we ask you for 30 days of the most recent pay stubs for all jobs, yes, some people send 30 days, but it has to be the most recent 30 days pay stubs. When we ask for the most recent two years of W-2s, that's not just the current job that you're on. If you work multiple jobs, we need all W-2s for the last two years. In terms of 1099s, we need all 1099s for all jobs that you worked in the last last year. And if you have a combination of both, you need to send over W-2s as well as 1099s. 
We also ask for the most recent two years of bank statements, all pages, even if it's blank. We need the bank statements that show two things. The bank statements that show your direct deposit for your checks. And then we also need to have the bank statements showing the funds that you're going to use for down payment and closing costs. If that is coming from a 401k or some type of retirement, then you want to make sure you have the most recent 401k statement or retirement statement so we can submit that as well. We also need a copy of an unexpired driver's license as well as your social security card or your passport. So those documents are very important to the process of getting pre-approval. Another thing is when you send over those documents, most lenders do not start working on your mortgage application until we have all documents in hand. So if you send documentation, you send your bank stubs on Monday, pay stubs on Tuesday, taxes on Wednesday, driver's license on Thursday, the lender is not working on your application as you submit those documents because it's not using your time effectively by getting things as they're being piecemeal. Typically, I tell people it takes 72 hours for me to go through the process. That 72 hours starts once I have everything because it doesn't make sense for me to stop and go, stop and go, stop and go, work on your application if things are being piecemeal and we don't know when things are coming. If you can send everything at once, that will help lenders out tremendously. If you don't, just kind of communicate with us and say, hey, I don't know how to access my W-2s, then we can have a conversation and I can tell you, hey, reach out to your current employer and see if they can provide them. If it's a past employer, do the same thing. And if not, we can go to irs.gov and pull off your W-2 transcripts, not your tax transcripts if you don't need them, just your W-2 transcripts, which is what we need to verify the income. Hopefully this has been helpful, right? The pre-approval process is not instant, even with a ton of technology. There's errors made in each person's situation is different. We try to do it as fast as we can, but the best processor in this process is the buyer because you have all the documentation that we need. When you're applying for a mortgage or if you're looking to apply for a mortgage, the list of documents that I will need will be below based off your situation. And if you have additional questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Hopefully this was helpful in helping you get started on the home buying journey. If you could do me a huge favor and hit the thumbs up button to get this pushed out in the YouTube algorithm. And if you're not new to the channel or new to the channel, but you have not not subscribed yet, do me a huge favor and hit the subscribe button so you can be subscribed and get notifications as to when we go live. I'm Kevin Jefferson, the People's Lender. Have a great day.